What if I told you all the photos and videos that you just saw were shot on a sub $200 lens? Today we're talking about 50 millimeter lenses, why they work so well for automotive photo and video, and why an affordable 50 millimeter like this should be your next lens if you don't already have one. If you're into automotive photo and video and are looking to upgrade from your kit lens, or maybe you're just brand new to photography and you're not sure what to buy, a 50 millimeter like this should be high on your list. Now the model that I use is for Canon RF cameras, but most manufacturers make their version of this lens. You may hear these affectionately referred to as the Nifty 50 or the Plastic Fantastic for that fantastic build quality, but the point is they're small, they're lightweight, and most importantly, affordable. So this one here is around $170 brand new. You can find used ones on eBay for around hundred bucks. I'm gonna put some links down in the description for some of the more popular versions of this lens. 50 millimeters is considered a normal focal length, meaning that the perspective that you get is similar to what we see with our eyes. That's why photos and videos that are shot with a 50 millimeter have a familiar look to them. Different lens focal lengths will actually change how a car appears in photos. On lenses that are too wide, it can actually change the proportions of the car, making the hood look too long or making the wheels appear egg-shaped or just giving the car some weird distortion. And then on lenses that are longer than 50 millimeters, it can actually make the car look smushed if you look at it from certain angles. A photo taken with a 50 millimeter will give the car the same perspective that you would see with your eyes as though you were standing next to it in person and looking at it in real life. Keep in mind that if you're using a crop sensor camera, it's gonna be more like 85 millimeters with the crop factor, but it's still a really popular focal length for shooting cars. You'll just have to stand further back to get the same framing. For those coming from the kit lens, the 50 millimeter has one huge advantage, which is the large f1.8 aperture. It allows more light into the camera so that you can shoot in low light without having a lot of noise or grain in your shots. More on that a little bit later in the video. It also gives you shallower depth of field compared to the kit lens, so you can have the car in nice sharp focus with the background blurred out. So if you've ever seen like a professional photo shoot of a car where it's got the blurry background, that's how they achieve that look using a wide aperture lens. This effect works for video as well, and I actually use this a lot on the channel if I want to isolate something in the scene that I want the viewer to focus on. So if you check out my car wash DIY from a few months ago, that entire video was shot start to finish on the 50mm f1.8. So for still photos like we just talked about, the 50 millimeter is gonna give the car a natural look preserving its perspective, and also it's gonna give you shallower depth of field than you can achieve with the kit lens. Another benefit that a lot of reviewers skip over is the form factor. These lenses are tiny and they hardly add any weight to your camera. That's why this is like my go-to lens for car shows and meets where I'm walking around a lot, I don't necessarily wanna carry around a heavy camera all day, which could possibly take away some of my enjoyment of the show. And 50 millimeters in general is just an excellent all-purpose focal length. You can use these for portraits, for family get-togethers, for travel. Anytime that I want to take professional looking photos but don't necessarily want to bring a bunch of stuff with me, this tends to be the lens that I grab and this could almost, almost be my only lens. Now being that these are just entry level lenses, the optics aren't perfect and a common issue with these nifty 50s is color fringing where you'll have like a green or a magenta glow around the high contrast areas. Now when I'm shooting cars, I notice this the most when the headlights are on, especially around my uh, daytime running lights on my F30, they'll usually get like a magenta cast around the edges. Now Adobe Lightroom has a nice tool where you can delete that with a couple of clicks, but that's just something to keep in mind. But for most of us who are just shooting for Instagram or social media, it's not that big of a deal. Deal. It's not until you put it on a high res monitor and you're zooming in all the way that you'll see those uh, little details. The 50mm f1.8 is excellent for video as well. In fact, every reel that I've ever shot on Instagram has been done with this one lens. And it's funny, a lot of people will ask what lens I'm using and they're just shocked to find out that I'm using something so inexpensive. Being that it's so lightweight, it makes it really easy to balance on the gimbal and it allows me to shoot for long periods of time without feeling fatigued. Keep in mind that these nifty 50s usually don't have stabilization. Now, if you're shooting video on a tripod, it's a non-issue, but as soon as you start to incorporate some camera movement, a gimbal is almost a necessity. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, you can use shallow depth of field to your advantage in video as well to really isolate the part of the scene that you want the viewer to focus on. And the shallow depth of field combined with some good lighting can create some really aesthetically pleasing and dare I say cinematic looking footage. 
The video autofocus on the RF 50mm combined with my Canon R5 is phenomenal. I'll typically use the vehicle tracking feature if I've got like the whole car in the shot. And then for other shots where I may be focused on the steering wheel or one of the wheels of the car, I'll either use the normal tracking or I'll use the center point autofocus, uh, both of which work extremely well. One thing that I don't like about this 50 millimeter lens for video is the manual focusing. So this is focused by wire and it's not a good implementation. I find that when I'm trying to manually rack focus in video, it seems like the focus wants to jump rather than making a smooth transition. That's sort of another area where you start to feel the low price of this lens. Now on my much, much more expensive 24 to 105, which I'm filming on right now, um, it's also focused by wire, but it's done really, really well. Uh, it looks and feels like you're focusing on a traditional geared lens. Now, since the autofocus on this lens works so well, I don't find myself manually focusing often, but when I do, it is a frustrating experience. Now, that is just an issue with this RF version 50 millimeter. I can't really speak on other brands and how they manually focus. Another benefit of these 50 millimeters over the kit lens is the low light performance. The f1.8 aperture lets in a lot more light than the kit lens does, and that allows you to shoot in low light at lower ISOs. With your kit lens, you're gonna have to go up in the ISO, which is gonna introduce noise or grain into your photos and videos. For example, here's a side-by-side -side of a shot at f1.8 and a shot at f5.6 with the ISO cranked up to compensate. Being able to shoot at night opens up a whole new world of interesting lighting. For automotive photo and video, I highly recommend picking up a circular polarizer to go with your 50 millimeter. Now these will change how light reflects off of the glass and the paint on the car. So as I twist it there, you can kind of see how the reflections change. And then the RF version of this lens uses a 43 millimeter filter. So if you're unsure of what size filter to buy, it's usually printed right on the front of the lens there. For video, my secret weapon for shooting cars is this KNF. This is a polarizer and ND built into one filter. So of course the polarizer is gonna control the reflections on the car and the ND um, controls how much light is allowed through the lens. That way in video mode, if you're trying to keep your shutter speed at 1 50th of a second, but you still want to use that large F 1.8 aperture, the the ND filter allows you to do that. So with these, they can get kind of expensive. So what I did is I bought a large one for my 24 to 105, and then I bought this step up ring. This allows me to adapt it onto my smaller uh, 50 millimeter filter thread. So it just goes on just like that. So I'm gonna link all these down below in case you're interested in checking any of these out for yourself. The last accessory that I would recommend is a lens hood. Now, usually with higher end lenses, they just include them in the box, but unfortunately with these sort of entry level Canon lenses, they're sold separately. I don't have one yet for this lens, but there've been plenty of occasions where I've had to like hold my hand up to the side of the lens to block the glare. So uh, yeah, especially if you're shooting cars, you're shooting outdoors a lot in the sunlight it's a good accessory to have. So yeah, whether you're looking to upgrade from your kit lens or maybe you just want a really solid lens for automotive photo and video, a 50 millimeter F1.8 is an excellent choice. So I'm gonna post some links down in the description for various brands, like if you've got a Canon or a Sony, I'm gonna to try to link all the ones that I can find down below, so feel free to check those out. Also, if you wanna see more sample photos and videos shot with this lens, check me out on Instagram, at Justin Bice. Thanks for watching, give me a thumbs up if you got something out of this and I will see you in the next video.